Everybody gets bored. Yep, no matter how much you may love something, at one stage it only takes a few shifts before you're done with it and you don't care. You probably shouldn't do this, but we're only human. We can be broken. This is the same for wrestling, especially WWE, with the now famous Vince McMahon three-week push being part of history. You come in, get featured for a trifecta of roars, and then poof, you're gone because you didn't become Steve Austin. If only I was joking. Either way, I am Simon from What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. And this is the 10 exact moments WWE stopped trying. Number 10, Diesel loses power. Vince McMahon did not like In Your House 4. The main event was Diesel versus the British Bulldog, and it disgusted Vince so much he threw his announcer headset on the floor when the broadcast was done, and he stormed backstage. Bruce Pritchard has even mentioned that he was so wound up he basically lost it behind the scenes. This wasn't it. The reason this caused a major issue, though, is because Diesel was the WWF champion and business wasn't headed in the direction needed. So when we got a match that the boss thought was a stinker, well, this was pretty much it for Big Daddy Cool. Devin Ash came out and said the same on Steve Austin's podcast that even he felt like this was when McMahon lost face in him. And what we all forget is that everybody would have struggled during this time in the WWF. They needed something different. And it was going to be a couple more years till they found it. Number nine, Billy Gunn is a New Age Outlaw again. So this is a weird one, as when Billy Gunn reunited with the Road Dog to become the New Age Outlaws again, they beat The Rock and Mankind for the WWF tag titles in September 1999 on SmackDown. So that is not all bad, but what it did underline was that the Ass Man singles experiment was done. This was clear as day as Jesse James revealing Billy as the surprise partner literally came weeks after the final attempt to make Gunner main event dude. Although the real kicker had come at SummerSlam when he was feuding with the great one, it just didn't click. It didn't help that Dwayne Johnson had eviscerated him during a promo that we still talk about today, but there was more here. Gunn's King of the Ring win was a bit low-key too, so eventually the powers that be just decided to let him be a great tag wrestler. And there's nothing wrong with that either, by the way. You've got to find your place in this life and roll with it. Being part of one of the most popular pairings in history... Ain't that bad. Number nine, Vladimir Kozlov gets drafted to ECW. Never forget that for a time there, WWE wanted Vladimir Kozlov as their top heel. I mean, he was put into programs with Triple H, beat The Undertaker, and was often going after the world title. He was the guy. So when soon after this, during a brand split, he was sent to ECW, some scratched their heads. While it looked like we were trying to turn Extreme Championship Wrestling into something important, it was clear it was going to be seen as the number three brand. There was no two ways about it. This had to be viewed as a step down. And sure, the counterpoint to this is McMahon may have been trying to bolster that side of things but it only took a short while to realize that nope, he was done. Before long, Vladimir was in a comedy tag team with Santino Morella. While some of that was quite funny, it was a far shout away from defeating the flippin' dead man. Thanks for coming. Number seven, the Taz experiment ends. So this was just silly. Taz had one of the best WWE debuts ever when he arrived at the 2000 Royal Rumble and wrecked Kurt Angle, and if we had just treated him like he was treated in ACW, everything would have been fine. But no, we can't do that, why would we? For you see, because Taz wasn't tall, there was some concern about how he would be received. Well, one, he was similar in height to Angle and no one cared about that. And two, we'd just seen how WWE fans were going to take to him. He walked out in Madison Square Garden and people lost it. The real question is what happened here? I mean, did somebody tell Vince McMahon that Taz was actually seven feet tall? Not like a totally different person walked through the door. And in April 2000 on SmackDown, Triple H beat the orange one as if he was nothing. Took about five minutes, brushed him aside, and that was that. Taz was so good he transitioned across the commentary and smashed that too. But he should have gotten so much more here. This was nuts. Number six, Paul Heyman ditches Curtis Axel. This one was also bonkers and makes you question what we hope to achieve. But in 2013, Curtis Axel, which was a terrible name, especially when you learned that this was Mr. Perfect's son, was teamed with Paul Heyman. Now, that has been utter gold throughout history, and with the right mouthpiece, sure, Axel could have been somebody. That doesn't happen by magic, though, and after a few segments with Curtis, Paul, CM Punk, and Triple H that weren't ideal for a lot of reasons, everyone decided it was Axel's fault down the card he went, and Heyman dumped him. Now that last part was especially bad because it just never happened. Everybody else had benefited, so the fact Curtis didn't made him look like an idiot. His intercontinental title reign was cut short too, when he was put in a team with Ryback. I think just so we could use the name Rybaxel, that was awful. Why on earth WWE didn't at least once try the whole, oh by the way, he's related to Kurt Henning, I will never know. 
but it was a mistake they should have done. Number five, nearly everything with The Revival. Now, do please remember that The Revival are now FTR and one of the best tag teams ever. I mean, they were in NXT and WWE too, but it's what we chose to do with them that will confuse you. Or maybe you loved it, and if you did, good for you, you won. But in April 2019, Dash and Dawson were caught in the showers by the Usos who they were feuding with. Because The Revival were good buddies, they agreed to shave each other's backs. And apparently this was the height of hilarity. I'll give you a small spoiler, it wasn't. This then carried on a week later when we got Usi hot, which is when Jimmy and Jay snuck some kind of burning cream into their opponent's bags, which saw them run around going, ow, my ass hurts. Again, all of this happened, you can go and see it. It's actually what WW would often do with many people, but the difference here was the revival had made it clear they wanted to leave the company, so you'd have to figure this was a slight knock on them to show them that management no longer cared. May as well have some fun while it lasts. And yes, when I said fun, I did the inverted commas thing with my hand. It's kind of silly. You can't see it. Anyway, number four, WWE and the women's tag titles. Now, as I am saying this, we may finally be in for a solid run with these championships. If this ends with some good matches, hell yeah, we're back. The reason I say back too is because for a while, they did matter. Sasha Banks and Bailey went out of their way to make them feel important and wanted to defend them here, there, and everywhere. It started all right, but then we got to WrestleMania 35, and at that show, the Iconics were able to win the gold... And all of a sudden, everything stopped. Because even though they held the belts for four months, they were only defended a grand total of four times. And even when Nikki Ash and Alexa Bliss won them in August, it was just so drab. Like we had to feature them because they were already there. Banks and Naomi wanted to restore glory to these, but we know what happened with that. So let's hope they do get another shot. And finally, these can mean something again. Number three, the fans get rid of Lex. At the end of the 94 Royal Rumble, both Bret Hart and Lex Luger went flying to the outside and hit the floor at the same time. It was all planned and executed perfectly, much to the credit of both guys. And in the fallout, the future of the WWF was sorted. Because as referees were raising hands all over the place, the fans went crazy for the Hitman, and they kind of ignored Luger. This was not great given that Lex was meant to be the next big thing. The experiment had failed. It's not like we gave Luger a helping hand either, given that he had beaten WWF champion Yokozuna by countout at SummerSlam 1993, but it was January when he ran out of rope. Brett was chosen as a guy to move the company forward, and by 1995, Lex was gone. That is quite the turnaround from being told he was going to be Hulk Hogan part two. Whoops. Number two, Shane McMahon's ego costs him. Apparently. Always have to caveat that because we never know what's going on. But if accurate, at the 2022 Royal Rumble, Shane McMahon turned up and he just wanted it all. He wanted to be the focal point. He wanted to win it, I suppose. And he didn't want to be eliminated by Brock Lesnar. Yep, that was the rumor. And given that Brock could throw an elephant if he wanted to, not sure we should have argued that one. It got so bad there was a shouting match between Vince and Shane, which ended when Daddy made it clear his son was done and he wouldn't be coming back again. Flub me. I would guess he probably still does return at one stage, but yeah, in terms of Vinnie Mac who helped create this human, he was done, he was out, and he didn't care anymore. Number one, Buff Bagwell sinks WCW. This is so crazy to think about now, but I promise it is true. In 2001, Vince McMahon was so determined to prove he could make WCW work, he was going to shelve Raw, keep Nitro on Monday nights, and then bring it back to prominence. A teaser for this would happen on the 9th of July 2001 as Buff Bagwell and Booker T went at it. Boy, was that a mistake. After years of being told this was the enemy, the fans weren't buying into it at all. And sure, the match itself was a little dry. I wouldn't say it was so bad we had to kill all plans even with this tepid response to it. But McMahon decided this was a disaster and cancelled everything. We also had a segment where Steve Austin and Kurt Angle booted Bagwell out the arena. So that's what we thought of him. And whatever we were supposed to get was off the table. WCW was never used as a sole entity again outside of the invasion angle. And today, it is just a memory. What a strange world we live in. Know of any other moments where WWE clearly stopped caring or trying, or whichever word you'd like to use? Please let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Please come follow us on social media, WhatCulture, WWE, and Simon316. And I do believe we have lots of videos. I ask you to watch one. My name is Simon for what Culture. Thank you very much for tuning in as always, and I do want to apologize if I sound a little echoey today. I am currently moving house and basically sat in some sort of residential shell. I don't like it. All will be fixed soon. Goodbye.